Welcome to our video tutorial on creating garments. In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the process step by step. Let's get started. First, we need to import the base model into our Blender project. This will serve as the foundation for our cloth simulation. Next, import the reference image into Blender and align it with the base model, ensuring it is positioned behind the character. This will help us create an accurate representation of the desired cloth. Now, it's time to create the cloth mesh. If the cloth is symmetric, we can save time by creating only half of the mesh and applying the mirror modifier. This will automatically generate the other half. To apply the mirror modifier, select the mesh you want to work with, navigate to the modifier panel, and add the mirror modifier to the selected mesh. This will create a mirrored object. Once we have the mesh ready, we can start sculpting it to perfectly conform to the body. Sculpt all parts of the cloth before proceeding to the next step. To enhance the realism and achieve a better fit on the body, we can add cloth simulations. Let's begin by adding collision to the body. This will ensure that the cloth interacts realistically with the character. After adding collision, adjust the thickness of the cloth by setting the outer value to 0.001 and the inner value to 0.05. These values can be tweaked based on your desired look. Next, select the cloth mesh and add the cloth modifier. This will enable the cloth simulation on the mesh. Press the space button to play the simulation and observe how the cloth behaves. Once you're satisfied, Go to the Modifier panel and apply the cloth modifier to the mesh. Before adding wrinkles, switch to Sculpt mode and smooth the mesh. This will create a smoother base for adding the wrinkles. To create wrinkles, make face sets to separate the parts of the cloth where the wrinkles should be added. Refer to the reference image for guidance. Now, draw the wrinkles as shown in the reference image. If you don't have enough triangle count, you can add the subdivision modifier to the mesh to make it look more realistic.
Apply all the modifiers to the mesh before unwrapping the UV map. To unwrap the UV map, select the mesh and go to the UV editing window. Mark seams on the mesh to separate it into distinct blocks. This will help in the unwrapping process. Press A to select all the faces of the mesh. Go to the UV menu and click on Unwrap to generate the UV map. You can now see the unwrapped UV map in the window. Make sure to check that all seams are marked to separate all parts of the garment. This will prevent any vertices from being unseparated. Repeat the same process for other parts of the garment, ensuring that all UV maps are unwrapped accurately. After unwrapping the UV maps, make sure to flatten every possible island. This will result in a more organized UV map. To flatten an island, select a central face and pick a vertical edge of that face. Press S and X with a value of 0. Repeat the same process for the other vertical edge. Align horizontal vertices using S, Y, and 0 keys. Now, select the face and press L to select all the faces of the island. Press F3 and search for Follow Active Quads. Select Length Average from the menu and click OK. Repeat the same process for other islands to ensure that all islands are flattened and organized. Once everything is fixed, rotate all the islands to point in the same direction. This will help when applying materials and textures. Now, let's move on to creating the materials. First, select the mesh and go to the Material panel. Click on New to create a default material. Add the base color and the normal map to the material, using the reference image as a guide. To create the normal map, you can download a cotton normal map image and drag it into the shader editor. Now we need to search for a normal map node in the editor. Look for it in the node search menu and add it to your workspace. Once you have the node, go ahead and connect it to the normal map image. Next, we want to make sure that the UV map matches the normal map properly. To do this, we'll need a couple more nodes. Look for a mapping node and a texture coordinator node, and add them to the editor as well. Connect the mapping node to the normal map texture, and then take the vector output of the mapping node and connect it to the UV input of the texture coordinator node. Now, if you notice any abnormal colors or issues with the normal map, we can fix that. One common fix is to change the color space of the image. Simply select the normal map image and change its color space to raw. This should help resolve any color discrepancies or abnormalities. Finally, we need to adjust the map scales to match the cloth or object we're working with. This step is crucial for achieving realistic results.
Use the scaling options available in your editor to adjust the map scales until it looks just right for your cloth or object. Once all the materials are set up, it's time to bake the textures. Before doing that, add a blank image texture to the editor to create a new texture map. Go to the Render Properties panel, change the Render Engine to Cycle, and find the Bake property. Start baking the textures to capture all the material details. Now, let's move on to rigging the garment. First, select the body mesh and then select the base garment mesh while holding the shift key. Go to the weight paint mode and transfer all the weights from the body mesh to the garment. This will ensure that the cloth moves and deforms realistically with the character. After transferring the weights, smooth them out and increase the iteration value to 2. This will refine the weighting and create a smoother deformation. Make the garment mesh a child of the armature and add the armature modifier to the garment. This will connect the cloth to the character's bones and enable realistic movement. To find any holes or stretches on the garment mesh, navigate to the pose mode and move the bones accordingly. In case you come across any stretches on the mesh, identify the vertex groups associated with those areas and choose the corresponding vertex group for the affected region. Proceed to adjust the weight distribution by blending them. If you encounter any holes within the mesh, you have the option to eliminate them by painting the weights until they are resolved. Transfer the weights from the base garment mesh to the other parts as well to complete the process.
Thank you for watching this tutorial.